All right. CNN is getting worse every day, the fake news capital of the world. We also know that liberals see blacks as pets. We also know that CNN is woke and affirmative action central, and they are not good at their job. So they attack people and don't really know how to do it right. It's not easy attacking someone, especially a politician. They're used to being framed. So this incompetent, stupid bitch attacks this black Republican dude and decides she's going to frame him by making him defend everything Trump has ever said in a very out of context montage. So let's go to the clip. Full screen. You say that actually this will increase access for voters of color, for African-Americans. That I mean, that's just not true. There have been analyses. Okay, stop. Multiple. So he's he's claimed that asking for ID does not restrict African-Americans. I don't know the whole context of that. That's not what he's here to discuss, by the way. He's here to discuss him being kicked out of the Black National Caucus because he's a Republican. He thinks that's fucked up, and blacks should be able to think for themselves. So her response to that is, instead of saying, well, they didn't let you in for another reason, or you're not qualified to be in, so she just ignores that. And she says two totally different things. One, you're wrong about voter suppression, and it is much harder for blacks to vote if they require ID. That may or may not be true. I don't know the context of what he said. Unfortunately, she skips over that entirely, so we don't know what the fuck is going on. She just says you're wrong. Asking for ID is very bad for blacks, which, again, is retarded. If you don't have ID, you shouldn't be voting, obviously. You can't pick up a plane ticket. You can't get a tattoo without ID. Then, in the same question, she makes him defend Trump. Check this out. Done, including by the Houston Chronicle, looking at the bill specifically in Texas, including by the Washington Post, looking at these bills Ooh. writ large. They're not going to increase access for voters of color. They're going to decrease access. Um, furthermore, Stop. you have defended Does that President include Polynesians? What does voters of color mean? She means blacks. Like, she doesn't mean Asians. What a stupid term. It just means non-whites, which, again, is CCP central. The, the, the communist manifesto, the communist action plan, the, what was it called there, the Marxist, the German thing in the 50s where they say, um, if your opponent becomes too annoying, just call him racist, 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 and it'll end the conversation. What the hell were they called? The man of the... Anyway, I'll get to it. Uh, Trump. For... You've said he's done enough. Um, furthermore, you have defended President Trump for... You've said he's done enough when it comes to rebuffing ideas about white supremacy. But I do want to listen to some of his prominent comments on the subject of race to get your perspective. So, wait. Blame. Wait. What was that hodgepodge of a question? This is what I mean. This is why they're getting their asses handed to them. Because they're attacking experienced people, and they have this pathetic attack. It's, it's fucking, it's childish. You're wrong about voter suppression, but I'm going to drop that and not give you a chance to respond. I'm not bringing up the reason you're here, which is this black group you're not allowed into because of your politics. And now I'm going to bombard you with a montage of unfortunate Donald Trump statements, and you now have to defend them all. I don't know if it's one by one or what. <laughs> this is high school shit. On the subject of race to get your perspective. Your perspective. Blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And Would you like me to condemn white proud boys. Ooh, and right proud proud boys. boys. Stand back. Stop. And stand by. When people proudly had their... Why can you not stop when I say stop? Okay. Well, you should have headphones on. So go back. Go back. Because the first one was good people on both sides. Now, our viewers have been through this a thousand times. He's talking about Charlottesville. He's talking about two different things at Charlottesville, for the record. One was the statue guys. They were there at the beginning, and there was good people on both sides of that debate. Then there was the Nazis versus Antifa. There was not good si uh, people on both sides of that. And he made it crystal clear a hundred times, not later, during that exact speech. Almost no one has seen this entire talk where he says, the statue guys had good and bad, the Nazis and the Antifa can both go fuck themselves.
Not in so many words. So that's useless. And he, he, is he supposed to like tell her to stop the montage and explain all of these? I don't think he knows these whole story, the, this whole story. No one does. So that one's ridiculous. Then the next one is the Proud Boys. So A, you have to take it as a fact that Proud Boys are white supremacists. That's just a fact according to CNN. It's not true, but they've just accepted this as a fact. Then secondly, you have to assume that he didn't mean stand down when he said stand black and stand by. He, anyone with a third of a brain knows he was trying to say stand down, but he fumbled his words and he said stand back and stand by. Do you honestly believe that that quote means Proud Boys are white supremacists and I'm having them stand by as my personal army, wherein I will eventually whoosh, unleash the Kraken, open the cage, and my army of Nazis will come and flood and invade the capital. Like, that narrative is so fucking retarded. I don't believe that anyone who uses it believes it. I mean, think about it. You like the implication. You like floating that around as a nebulous cloud. But do you really believe that Trump sees the Proud Boys as a Nazi army he can call on at any time with a giant swastika broadcast into the clouds like a bat signal? Come on. No doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. <laughs> Would you like me to condemn the Proud Boys? Right Proud, right Proud Boys, right. stand back and stand by. When people proudly had their Confederate flags, they're not talking about racism. They love their flag. Scott, represent if you don't know that, you're fucking ignorant. We've gone through this a thousand times. You go to Delaware on the 95, and there is a flag bigger than the studio, a Confederate flag. It means different things to different people. I'm sure there is a fraction of people who thinks it means, yeah, I liked it when we had slavery in the South, and that was awesome. Uh, 30 people think that. It means rebel. It means I hate the North. In upstate New York, you see the Confederate flag everywhere. Nothing to do with race. You know what it means in upstate New York? It means I hate Manhattan. I'm a proud New Yorker, New York State, but I hate New York City. Uh, in this, you see it all over the South. You see blacks supporting the Confederate flag. To Back in the 80s, everyone had a Confederate flag. Billy Idol had it. Rebel Yell, named after Rebel Yell whiskey, which we ha have over here, that the Rolling Stones used to drink. It just meant rebel forever. Hippies would have Confederate flags. It means anti-government. So the fact that you're incapable of nuance and assume that the Dixie flag means I support slavery means that you're out of touch with society. You've never been on a fucking road trip. You never talked to anyone south of the Mason-Dixon line. Fuck you. Against the South. What do you prefer? Blacks for Trump or African Americans for Trump? Stop. George Washington was a... What the hell's the matter with that? African Americans is a gay term. Blacks don't use it. It's embarrassing. I don't think blacks in America want anything to do with Africa. They don't want, if they, if they did, they'd, they'd go back. They'd mention it. When they tried going to Liberia, the freed slaves, and it turned into a, yet another African shithole, which, by the way, it's been on my mind recently. So we had slavery for 30 years. We, we, what was it abolished? 1804? So they came here in the late 1700s. Uh, for 30 years, they were human property. Disgusting, horrible. No controversy there, right? And then they were freed, and they had nothing. They started with zero. Not 40 acres and a mule, zilch. Second class citizens, Negroes, right? That's terrible. But we sent British, Scottish, Irish, Welsh, uh, human garbage, murderers, rapists, to penal colonies in Australia. We did that for 80 years, around the same time. But I think it ended in 1884 or something to, to whatever it was. 1804? 80 years that we just threw them into this fucking jungle and said, fend for yourselves. You're dealing with psychopaths. I mean, 100% of your population are criminals. And we just threw them there and said, you survive. They finally got out in the late 1800s and they built one of the most beautiful countries in the world. I mean, who has a problem with Australia? It's fucking amazing. It's better than America, really, when you look at the freedom and the economy and the uh, I've granted COVID has been an absolute nightmare. Oh, they also had to fight aboriginals too. Loco is one of them dead. So both of those seem like horrible things, but uh, no one ever talks about the Australians surviving for 80 years of being sent to a random island in the middle of nowhere to die. Just a slave owner. 
Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now okay, lose this his one, status? I don't even get what they're saying. Are they saying that he thinks slave owners were awesome? He, even the farthest left Antifa lunatic has to see that particular clip and understand he's saying, you want to take down all the statues of slave owners? Okay. But some of them were pretty integral to American history, like George Washington, the guy who created America. Do we rip down his statues? What about the money? They're on all this different money. Do we abolish them from the money? And his point was, when you go back whitewashing history and trying to take all the badness out of it and all the sins out of it, you end up with no history. History isn't pretty. Life sucked back then. And we're sorry. It was pretty old-fashioned 250 years ago. Sorry. Look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Okay, this you... is another example of people at CNN and whoever puts these montages together having never... Oh, there's a fruit fly. Having never met a, a black person before. The way to catch flies, mosquitoes, is you come at them and then you do like a scoop where you create a wind tunnel that they get sucked into. And then you get them and you roll your fingers. So you grind them up. Don't go like that. That pushes the air away. You want to schmook them and then screek them. Anyway, um, if you know black people, you can't say that's my nigga. And you know that's the third rail. So you joke around it. And you say, look at you. You're my African-American right there. That's like a, a, a cool, funny thing you'd say to a black person who would find it amusing. This is clearly someone who hangs around black people a lot and is used to the kind of third rail jokes that you skim around. What, how are you seeing that as negative? Are you thinking he's so dumb that he wants to say that's my nigga, but substituted nigga at the end? Is that what you think? Yeah, I think you, you do believe that because you've never met a black person and you don't riff with them. You the greatest. Do you know what I'm talking about? Wouldn't you love to see one of these? What a racist pig. When somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. So that's racist, that by the way, because the person who was disrespecting the flag was kind of, was he black? Is Colin Kaepernick black? I would argue that Sean King is more black than Colin Kaepernick. He's had more time as a black man doing black things. Sean King is more black than Colin. Colin Kaepernick is me. He had the exact same life as me, but with more sports. So, am I black? I've got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? So, she, this is her two things. One, you're an idiot. So, he goes on there to discuss that he's not part of this black congressional caucus thing. Her response is, one, you're an idiot for a thing you said about uh, black voters. And two, defend every, all of these out-of-context quotes from Trump. What's his response going to be? You just saw mine. And I had a pause button person that said things like that might be incongruent with the mission of the CBC? Oh, uh, stop. First of all, whatever the president I finally get her point. Her point is that you support Trump and he's a racist and the Black Caucus can't have racists in it. I'm, f I'm finally able... This is like translating Biden's. I'm tr finally able to translate a CNN. Okay, let's see how he handles it. Uh, first of all, whatever the president said in the past has nothing to do with this discussion at all. I think well, you've, defend, you've defended, a, you've defended, you've uh, defended. Don't cut me off. I didn't. I have not cut you off in this interview. Please do not do that to me. Second. Thank you. Punch. As a black man in America, I'm allowed to have my own thoughts on who I choose to support and who I choose not to support. I think that it's important whether you're talking about the Congressional Black Caucus or the Florida State Legislative Black Caucus or the National Caucus of State Black Legislators organizations I have been a part of in the past. My support of President Trump has been consistent. But at the same time, I've had the ability to advocate for for uh, issues, ideas, proposals, and funding that have helped the black community in my state. You're talking to somebody who my first three years in college was at Florida A&M and HBCU. So whether my support, my support for President Trump, uh, whether it's for or against, is irrelevant. That has nothing to do with this discussion. Thank this you. is whether the uh, ideology of somebody who is conservative is welcome in the Congressional Black Caucus. It's really that simple. And yeah. so to bring up President Trump and try to make this about him does not matter. It's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with the situation at hand. Well, the I ask you because the CBC would let me join. The, Mia Love, for instance, there have been Republicans. Fantastic. That is why CNN is a sinking ship, because they are full of holes.